Get ready, because it's time to probe into a few really bad games on NES, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis. Probe Entertainment had a decent career in the gaming industry, having developed a lot of licensed games. Then, in 1995, it was acquired by Acclaim Software, which makes sense due to Acclaim being one of the first publishers I think of when I think about licensed games. So let's look at four random games that probably infiltrated our lives at some point. I don't hate Alien 3 on NES, but it is by no means a good game. It has a lot going against it, like fall damage, a time limit, and limited ammo. You also cannot jump and shoot, which sucks because it's common to find an alien hanging off the ceiling so you have to wait for it to drop down before shooting. Your goal is to save a bunch of prisoners and make it to the exit of the level before the time runs out. This would be easier with a map, but at least you can get a little radar item that alerts you when an alien is nearby. If you don't save all the prisoners, after the game over screen, they take you around the level showing you where the missed prisoners were. And they also let you know that because of you, their guts exploded, which is actually pretty funny. Having grown up in the 90s, I remember being dragged along to see the Page Master in theaters and going to birthday parties where the gifts had Page Master wrapping paper. I didn't really like the movie then, and having replayed the game recently, I certainly don't like it as an adult. The graphics are great, I'll give the game that much. But as for a lot of movie tie-in games of the time, that doesn't mean good gameplay. What stands out to me the most is the crazy over-the-top jumping and falling animation. I guess this was to make the movements more realistic, but it causes the gameplay to suffer. You're also insanely heavy sounding when you fall or land a jump, which makes zero sense. Are you a kid or thwomp for Mario? The level design sucks and it's just a sloppy, confusing layout. Also, it's one of those games that sends you all the way back to the beginning if you die. And these aren't the type of levels I want to replay. Next up, we have Daffy Duck in Hollywood for Sega Genesis. I've tried Duck Dodgers on N64 and thought it was surprisingly decent, so I'm down to play another Daffy-related game. But this one misses the mark big time. Much like the Page Master, it's nice looking, but the gameplay sucks and I constantly found myself sliding down a slope or jumping into a ditch. I don't know if I found that more annoying, or the word GO aggressively flashing at me in the top right hand corner. A lot of the time, it's not clear as to what objects hurt you and which ones are part of the background. I do like the big green gun that turns your enemies into bubbles you can burst. I'll give it that. The level design feels super messy and it's easy to get stuck. Like for example, this area in level 1. The only way to get out of it is to die. I don't think I'm missing out by not giving this game another shot. And finally, let's look at Batman Forever on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, it also sucked on Super Nintendo, but we're focusing on the Genesis one today. This game really is a time capsule, visually. You can really tell Mortal Kombat was what they were striving for. It wants to be a side-scrolling beat-em-up, yeah, but it also wants to combine it with Mortal Kombat. It just doesn't work. Every enemy that you encounter feels like a full-on battle and it gets exhausting. But the main battle with this game is just trying to comprehend the ass-backwards controls. Trying to use the grappling hook truly tested me. You have to stand directly underneath the hole above you and hit A and B at the same time, while also hitting up on the D-pad. It's real finicky too. So there you have it, four games from Probe that left a bad taste in my mouth. Let me know in the comments which games you thought were bad, or good, and thank you so much for watching. See you next time, bye!